Hello citizens and welcome back. Today's video will be your one-stop shop for all mining related information. It's mostly aimed at the new citizens out there, but I think even the more experienced miners will find something new. I'm going to go over all variants of mining currently in Star Citizen, the ships, the components and the equipment so that you know everything you need to get started. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And of course, here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. Alright, I will start off the tutorial with the simplest form of mining, which is FPS mining. FPS mining involves going to a cave to mine small crystal deposits with a multi-tool. So let's start with the required gear. Most importantly, you will need a multi-tool with the mining attachment to break the rocks. Then you will need a backpack to store the mined crystals. I recommend going with either Navikov or Pembroke environmental armor and backpack, depending on what environment you're going into. These armors offer great protection from the elements and damage, and have the highest carrying capacity of all armors as far as I know. I also recommend taking some food and water along with a med pen or two and a gun. Caves sometimes have hostile NPCs spawn and it might be a good idea to have some firepower with you if that happens. As far as ships, any ship will do, but I recommend using smaller ships as they have a higher chance of being able to fly inside some of the caves. So how do you find caves? You have multiple options. The simplest is go to the marked caves that are present on some planets. The safer option is to pick up an investigation mission located in the cave, because this will give you an unmarked cave and you are less likely to be disrupted by other players. If you are looking for a fight, you could pick up one of the cave bounty missions. This will give you some NPCs to shoot at and a nice payout. But I recommend you do this with a group and make sure that someone has a medgun just in case one of the NPCs gets lucky. Ok, let's get to the mining. You are looking for small rocks with tiny colored crystals all over. Bring out your mining tool by pressing 4. When you aim, mineable rocks will highlight and start scanning. You are primarily looking for head knight which is purple in color, but depending on how lucky you get you might not be able to be so picky. Once the rock is scanned, you will see the properties on the right and charge levels on the left. By scrolling up you increase the laser power of your multi-tool. You will see a white bar rising on the left. This is the rock charge level. Your goal is to get it into the green area and keep it there. Once the charge level enters the green area it will start filling up. Once it fills up, the rock will crack. If the charge level enters the red area, the rock will start overcharging. This can cause an explosion that might kill you. Once you have the rock cracked, it will break into several smaller crystals. You will need to individually store these using the interaction mode. Also, at the time of recording, I have observed that mineable rocks in caves respawn after 15 to 20 minutes. So if you end up deep in a cave and can't find anything, try heading back the way you went down. Ok, so now that you have filled your backpack, it's time to sell what you mined. The best place to do so is the nearest mining outpost. Just head into the storage building and use the trading terminal. Make sure to select the proper inventory on the left. So how much can you make this way? Well, in my attempts it was anywhere between 20,000 and 40,000 credits per hour. You can increase this number if you pair mining with cave clearing and bounty missions with the additional risk. Overall, cave mining pays out less than what you could make doing some other missions, but it is a good way to get started with mining if that's what you want to do, and it should quickly give you the funds to move on to vehicle mining. Vehicle mining is done by a ground vehicle on the surface of a planet or a moon. Currently we only have two vehicles capable of this, the ROC and the ROC DS, which is just a two seat variant of the ROC with more cargo capacity. You can check out my review to find out more. So you will need a ROC and a ship that can carry it. I recommend using the Cutlass Black. Both the rock and the cutlass can be rented at refinery decks on stations that have one. If you want to use the DS variant with a friend, you will need a larger ship to carry it like a Constellation or a Mercury. Also, the DS variant cannot be rented. I also recommend you equip either Navikov or Pembroke environmental armor because the seat in the rock is exposed to the elements. But you won't need a backpack or a weapon, but do bring some water and food in case you stay out for too long. You need to start by loading the rock onto a ship. I recommend you do this at a ground outpost that has a vehicle spawn console. You can spawn vehicles at New Babbage and Lorville as well, but in Lorville it will take too long due to the no-fly zone. Once you have the vehicle loaded, you can start searching. I suggest you fly as far away from any outpost as possible and do not fly in a straight line away from one. The safest thing to do is to fly up to an OM, align and spool for another OM and drop out about halfway by holding down the quantum key again and then flying back down to the surface. You may be asking, why do I have to make such an effort to go so far away from anything? It's simple, while vehicle mining you're extremely vulnerable to an attack from the air, and these attacks are very common. People will either just kill you or steal your cargo, so you should make the best effort to stay hidden. 
Also, the rock has a very short radar range, so you won't have much warning unless you bring a friend to sit in the dirt while you mine. Now that you're far away from anything, it's time to start looking for rocks to mine. Visually, they are the same type as the ones you were mining in caves, just bigger. However, they will show up on your ship's HUD as diamond icons when you get close. You can send out scanner pings which will highlight nearby deposits and give you a rough idea of which way to go. Be careful though, the icons will show up on your HUD at a very short range, so if you're flying too fast, you might miss them. Once you find rocks to mine, land and offload your rock. Press M to bring out the mining arm and ensure that you're in fracturing mode. When you aim at a rock, it will scan, telling you its contents and properties. Mining works the same way as with the multi-tool. Change the laser power by scrolling up or down. The goal is to keep the rock charge level in the green area until the rock cracks. It will bring into a lot of small crystals that are physicalized, so be careful not to lose any, especially when mining on a slope. Right click to switch to extraction mode. The extraction mode will allow you to pick up the crystals using a tractor beam. Try to take it slowly because sometimes the crystals will bounce off the laser head and you will need to find them on the ground again. Once you're done with the current cluster of rocks, load your vehicle and move on. In my testing it took me anywhere between 30 to 90 minutes to fill the rock depending on how lucky I got. Again, you'll sell the mine crystals at mining outposts. Starting with 317, you no longer have to offload the rock from your ship. But just in case this bug comes back in the future, if you don't see the rock on the cell screen, just drive it out of your ship and that should make it appear. On average, I made about 50 to 100,000 credits per hour, which is pretty decent. This means that vehicle mining is a pretty good way to earn money, especially once you buy the rock and only rent the cutlass to carry it. And it should also get you the money to buy a cutlass fairly quickly if this is what you want to do. On the other hand, vehicle mining is very risky. If you're mining alone, you have very little situational awareness and it is easy to get ambushed. Having someone sit in the turret gives you some early warning, but it may not be enough, as most fighters will detect you before you detect them. Also, at the time of recording, there are still exploits in game that allow other players to get a marker for you without being in the same party, which is something that pirates routinely use to find prey. On a final note on vehicle mining, supposedly some caves have mineables for the rock, but I was unable to find any. But due to the randomly generated nature of mineables, it might have just been bad luck. And finally, ship mining. Ship mining can be regarded as the most advanced gameplay loop considering it received a lot of features over the years. And also out of all mining options, it has been around the longest. There are two mining ships currently available. The Prospector, which is a solo ship, and the Mole, which needs up to four players to operate, but you can manage with two or three, no problem. Mining with friends is quite fun and it allows you more flexibility with your mining loadout. However, while both Mole and Prospector can be purchased in-game, only the Prospector can be rented. But having multiple Prospectors has roughly the same benefits as flying a Mole. Now that we know the ships, let's talk about loadouts. The most important part is the mining laser. The stock laser is okay, but you will want to upgrade it as soon as possible. At the time of recording, the most widely used laser is the Lancet. Better lasers also allow you to equip more mining modules. Mining modules are small components that allow you to further tweak the properties of your mining laser. They fall into two categories, passive and active. Passive modules are active permanently and active modules need to be activated, they have a limited duration and number of charges before they are spent. I recommend using the filter module and the focus module, especially if you're using the Lancet laser. Mining lasers and modules can be purchased at refinery stations and some ship component stores. Small note here, at the time of recording, mining modules are lost when the mining ship is reclaimed, but it is very likely to be fixed soon. As far as other components, at the start this is not too important, but once you get into mining and have some money to spend, I recommend buying an A-grade civilian quantum drive. This will speed up your refinery trips significantly. And also a grade A military shield. Military shields have more distortion resistance and recharge much faster than the industrial shields mining ships are stock equipped with. Also, you cannot change components on rented ships, so unfortunately you will be stuck with the stock loadout. However, starting in 317, there is a way to improve your mining experience without components. I'm talking about mining gadgets. Mining gadgets are small devices that can be placed on a mineable rock to change its properties. You can purchase these at the refineries. As far as equipment, a flight suit and a helmet should do, unless you plan to mine on planets or moons and use mining gadgets, in which case I would recommend the environmental suit with a backpack. So where to mine? Well, you have two options, you can mine on moons and planets or go out to the Iron Halo. Mining on moons and planets is more convenient, but you are running the same risk as when mining with a rock. Also, the rock sizes found on the surface can vary greatly. 
I have observed rocks with mass between 3000 to 9000. A single prospector won't be able to crack anything over 6000 in mass depending on the contents. If you're using a mole or multiple prospectors this shouldn't be a problem. Meanwhile all the rocks in the iron halo are around 5000 in mass which is perfect for solo miners. There is also a higher chance of clusters of rocks spawning so mining in groups can also be profitable. Also it is much less likely that someone will find you and kill you seeing as the iron halo is very remote. You're still vulnerable to the location exploit but the chances of someone coming out to kill you are smaller. So how do you get to the iron halo? My favorite way is to start at Hurl 2 and jump towards Arkel 4. Then you have to stop Quantum somewhere between 8 and 9 million kilometers away from Arkel 4. You may not hit the asteroid belt on the first try, in which case just jump forward a few hundred thousand kilometers and you will likely find it. There are of course other ways to get there with plenty of great guides out there on how to do so, so feel free to check those out as well. You find mineable rocks by sending out scanner pings by pressing tab. Technically this is not necessary, but due to the rock detectability range changes in 317 it will definitely help you find them at longer ranges. Once you find the rock you have two options on how to figure out the contents. You can either scan it using the scanning mode or the mining mode. The mining mode seems to be more reliable and it gives you more relevant information. Press M to bring up your mining laser and point it at the rock. This will start the scan. This will tell you the composition, resistance, instability and the optimal charge energy. So what elements should you be looking for? Well values change over time so if you're watching this video a long time after it was released I recommend you look up the latest information. But at the time of recording Laranite, Grecium, Terranite and Quantanium are the most valuable. The general rule of thumb is that if you find something that doesn't exist in real life it's probably worth some money. Also don't forget to look at concentrations. Higher numbers are always better and try to avoid mining rocks with a high amount of inert materials. An important note on Quantanium, once you extract Quantanium it becomes volatile. This means that it will start deteriorating over time, lose value and become unstable. Currently the timer is about 15 minutes. About halfway you get a warning and after that cargo becomes more and more dangerous. When the timer runs out the quantanium will explode. Also let me explain the two basic properties of mineable rocks. Instability and resistance. Resistance tells you how difficult the rock will be to charge. Instability tells you how much the charge level will fluctuate as you charge the rock. This should help you decide which modules and gadgets to use. Now let's move on to mining. Once you find the rock you want to mine, if you want to use a gadget you need to get out of your ship and place the gadget onto the rock. The placing interaction is a bit awkward but if you look at the corner of the gadget it works pretty well. After you place the gadget you need to set it. You do this by moving the sliders to adjust the two waveforms to match. Once it's set the button will light up and let you activate the gadget. You can collect your gadget after the rock is cracked. Back in your ship you activate mining mode by pressing M. And from here it works exactly the same as before. You charge the rock into the green zone and keep it there until it breaks. Most rocks will break into smaller pieces that need to be broken down further. These pieces will have an orange outline. The process is the same just requires much less power. Pieces that have a purple outline can be extracted. Right click will switch your laser into extraction mode. Start with the highest concentration of valuable materials and move down. Once your ship is full head back to the refinery for the final part of the mining process. At the refinery you have two options. Either you sell the raw materials or you refine them and sell the processed goods. Generally speaking refining doubles the value of what you have mined so I recommend doing it. Of course if you don't have a cargo ship to carry the goods you might have to rent it but trust me it's worth it. To refine you go into the refinery terminal, select your mining ship, select the refining method and raw materials and click on get quote. This will tell you how much it will cost and how long it will take. I recommend using the Dynex solventation method as it has a very good yield and a fairly low price. But any of the high yield methods will do. Click confirm and all you have to do now is wait. The processing time is generally at least a few hours. Of course you can go on and mine some more, there is no limit on how many refinery jobs you can have running. Once the refining job is done you will get a notification on your HUD. You will also get a notification that refining jobs are completed after you log in. When you are ready to collect, go back to the refinery, select the destination ship from the refinery console and confirm. This will transfer the goods into your ship. Now all you have to do is fly to the nearest landing zone and sell. Rinse and repeat until you are rich. In my opinion ship mining is the best way to mine. However it does require expensive ships to do so. 
You can rent the ships, but this will cut into your profits until you make enough money to buy them. Depending on where you mine, you will be vulnerable to attacks, but this risk can be reduced by mining in the Iron Halo. Depending on your skill and luck, you can make up to 500,000 credits per hour after refining, which makes mining extremely profitable. And also, as I've been told, mining out there in the Halo is also quite relaxing. Feel free to share your tips and tricks for mining in the comments, and I hope this information helps. Thank you for watching, fly safe, and I will see you in the verse.